Hey, the Canadian Assassin, and she is back for another one, my co-host. Uh, she is uh, the farmer's daughter, also hails from the valley. Please welcome Emily May. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Yeah. Another beautiful or kind of sort of beautiful day in LA. Kind of beautiful. <laughs> uh, we have an amazing show today and we have amazing guests like we always do. Uh, she calls herself the queen of the jungle and she is the queen of the ring. The ring. Please welcome WOW superhero, Jungle Girl. What's up? Hello, hello. Hi, How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. I just want to say the the background, your hair yes. and your voice just gives me like that tranquil feeling like everything is one with the world. Well, as long as we're not in the ring together, then everything is oh. fun. Everything is tranquil when I'm not there. This is my peace. And then I get in the ring. There's no peace for anybody but myself after the match. I don't want wow. any of that. Smoke. She's like so zen. <laughs> I don't want any of that smoke. So let's get into it. Um, WOW has been around for a long period of time. Um, tell us the difference of when you first started to right now. Wow, what a huge transition. So when we started, I think that the overall vision of what David McLean had in mind is what you see coming into fruition now. The difference was we didn't have the level of talent. We didn't have all parties that were committed, meaning the production, meaning Jeannie Buss on board, meaning um, all of the people with Access TV that shared that same vision with David. So what you've seen is what he's tried to capture over the past 20 years and really seeing it come to fruition as far as absolute top of the line female wrestlers that, by the way, are some of the top wrestlers in the industry, not just female mm -hmm. wrestling, but just wrestling in general. And mm -hmm. the production value with Access TV is just top notch. So not only do you have high, high caliber wrestling, but you have the production value that goes with it. And I think we have put together an extraordinary package. So whether you are a, a true passionate wrestling fan or you're just coming on board for the first time, I think that we have the total package to convert and to keep real wrestling fans interested in the product. Yeah, I went to the live show last year around this time, and it was absolutely amazing. Um, what was what was your or what is your favorite match to date since you've been in WoW? Oh man, well there have been a few. So one in particular that comes to mind is the ladder match that I had, our first pay per view. So all women's pay per view back in. 1999 mm -hmm. and that was i jumped off a 25 foot ladder i mean it just uh that was exhilarating so it was a splash match with becky the farmer's daughter um i think oh. yeah. moment yeah that's why i was giggling when you first came on but <laughs> uh, i think another moment was when i won the championship belt from lana star Mm -hmm. And they put my son, who at the time was four years old, on the Jumbotron. He's like, Mommy, you finally did it. You finally won the golden belt. Was, um, I mean, it was great. It was really wonderful to have him part of the show. It was wonderful mm -hmm. to have that moment that I had been chasing for so many years. And then I think each match that I've done since then has just gotten better and better. They each have their moments that are incredibly special to me. To be in the ring with uh, the caliber of talent like a Tessa Blanchard is um, is really, really an ideal situation for someone like me um, who's been in the business for a long time and has wanted to have that caliber of wrestling. So it's awesome. I love it. Now, who would you like to have a match with? Um, Either in WOW or outside of WOW? Well, listen, I keep my eye on the prize, and Tessa Blanchard right now has the championship belt, so I'm going to go with Tessa. Uh, she's going to take all, right, all the that's, smoke. That, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's going to be incredible to watch and see see what happens. <laughs> yeah, somebody asked um, me today if Tessa was going to be the same as uh, when she first stepped in there, and I said, well, I certainly hope not. Ooh. Ooh. Well, then. Oh, <laughs> um, so as you're as you're preparing for these big matches and you've had some incredible, incredible moments in the ring, what do you prepare for physically and mentally to get into that ring? 
Well, I think the way that I train myself physically, as far as pushing myself to the limits, I think there's something that is um, that I credit that to my mental well-being. So when I know that I can push myself to a place physically where my body just wants to shut down and say no, but I push through mentally, I think when I find myself in difficult situations, I can always tap into that energy and say, listen, You can push through anything. If I can push through something that is physically demanding, puts me to the brink, makes me want to throw up every time, and yet I can persevere. I've done all the obstacle races and have Mm -hmm. run uh, far distances and have tested myself physically. And when I know that I can test myself physically like that, I know that it is more mental than anything else. So when you put something in front of me that's mental, um, I've already conquered it. So... You've been doing this for quite a, a quite a period of time. What's your training like? Has it changed since um, since you started wrestling to to this point? No, not really. I mean, I I own a gym, which uh-huh. is uh, called Endorphasm here in Richmond, Virginia. And Endorphasm is the point during physical exertion that you feel all things are possible. So I believe that. I believe in pushing myself to the point where I feel all things are possible. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a an accountability person. I believe in accountability and responsibility for self. So if I set forth to do something, I'm going to do it because I don't like disappointing myself. Mm-hmm. And I have a kid now who's 10, and I certainly, if I say what I say I'm going to do, I better do it because I believe that actions speak louder than words. And I lead by example, and I walk the walk. Damn. So here's my question with the fitness stuff. You know how, uh, for instance, like LeBron, he's kind of as as he's been aging, he's taken more um, not different variations of training, but more um, like he'll do like ice baths and all this other stuff. Do you do that as well? Or is it more of if you continue as far as doing um, pushing yourself to limit your body will adapt no matter as the years go by? I think there are small adjustments, especially different injuries that I've um, been on the unfortunate receiving side of. Uh, There are some adjustments that I make to my training. So instead of hitting it hard plyometric wise, maybe four days a week, I'll cut it down to three days a week and do Mm -hmm. something a little bit more push pull related. Um, I don't like ice baths. I don't like the cold. So that's not going to happen even, you know, if there are benefits to it. You know, a lot of people talk about meditation and I just, um, I don't want to call my mind that much. So meditation is not for me. I find Mm -hmm. that I'm pushing myself. That's my meditative state. So Mm -hmm. there's going to come a day when I can't do this anymore. And today is not that day. So until that day comes, I'm going to push as hard as I can. Man, I love that attitude. There you (laughs) you have it. So I, um, I was reading up and and you have this you have your fitness book that was put out a while ago and you also um I I just love like you're so inspiring and there's so many young girls out there especially with this new age of social media where there's pictures of like these per- picture perfect women out there altered um altered completely <laughs> altered yeah. um what's some advice like some some advice on like gaining self confidence or um battling maybe a, a an eating disorder or you know, an experience with, you know, battling with food and kind of your relationship with food? Do you have advice out there for women or even men that are struggling with it? Um, and, you know, it's interesting that you bring up men because I think there are a lot more men that, that suffer mm-hmm. from it and they don't speak about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's, it is very difficult to find your place and to find that confidence. And I think for me is that I realized that I was so uniquely me and I had to embrace the uniqueness that was me. I'm not a small girl. I'm a very muscular uh, woman. And um, and my body has changed over the years. But what I pay very, very close attention to are the individuals when I go to the grocery store, the older couples who are walking hand in hand and, you know, are not walking very quickly. And, you know, at the end of the day, The only thing that everybody wants is time. That's the equalizer among Mm -hmm. all people. I don't care if you're pink, purple, black, white, orange, blue, male, female, whatever you identify yourself with or as, the equalizer is time. And I think we waste a lot of time on the aesthetics and what we look like and what we could be and what we couldn't be. Listen, 
Um, I've been there. I struggled. And then I look back and I'm like, what the hell was I thinking when I was younger? Why did I even, you know, nitpick things? And I think, you know, with age comes wisdom. And I can look back at, at it now and be like, you know, how silly to have wasted so much time. But I believe in eat the damn cookie. And I believe that there is moderation and moderation. And I believe in enjoying yourself. And I believe that when you look in the mirror, that you need to be proud of the person that you are. And listen, you have to be confident and proud of who you are in this moment, because five pounds or any kind of change doesn't change who you are. So it is important to embrace everything. I do believe in perfection, in perfection in that we are all perfect as we are and to embrace that. And there's always going to be somebody out there that tells you that you can't be something or you couldn't be. And listen to those people. I'm not out there to prove anybody right. I'm only out there or to prove them wrong. I'm out there to prove myself right. That's it. And that's how, the words that you have to live by. And kind of my motto is find yourself, embrace it, prove yourself right. Well, then. <laughs> oh. When are you moving to LA I know. Again? I, like, <laughs> I, I think I, I need you more in my life. I know, right? <laughs> um, so is, is, is that the same type of advice that you take to uh, the wrestlers that are being added on to WOW? Or what's what's the, what's the if you can give us that, the, the locker room, what does the locker room look like, like from your perspective with the, the new girls in WOW? It's, a, it's an interesting mix. Um, it's an interesting mix because you have women that have been in the industry for a long time and have never been with WOW. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're coming into a locker room that are homegrown girls that are WOW trained exclusively and have never been on the independent circuit. Um, to all of them, you know, my words of advice, because I've been on both sides, are to be respectful to one another. Um, everybody has had their start and everybody will move up the ranks and I don't care who you are. I don't care what level you're at. I don't care what years of experience you have. Be kind, be respectful to one another. The more kind and the more respectful, the better the product we put out there. And quite honestly, the better we each make each other look, the better the end product. So um, I don't have a lot of time for attitudes or um, people that uh, think they're better than anybody else. Yes, other people that are more talented, of course, but everybody has their time and everybody can grow. And now what's your relationship with uh, David McLean been like throughout the years? Mm -hmm. um, the one scene that I really remember, I forgot what season it was, but you and him were on the beach and you challenge him to a race like that every time I, for some reason every time like I, I think of wow that's kind of the, the one memorable scene to me I mean there's plenty more but yeah. that was just very um I don't know touching that's, that's, I guess yeah. so I, what's your relationship I, been like you know David and I have had a very good relationship he um is you know his story and how he started um glow really to begin with and then began wow is is really a testament to the human that he is, you know, being on the road and seeing how women were treated in the industry. And he felt that women should be just uh, valued equally to the men and that they deserved their own platform to have that, um, that same level of, um, of respect. And so his vision has been to dedicate an hour to women's wrestling, to have that same level of respect. And I think that um, there's a mutual respect between the two of us. I think he respects me as um, as a person first, as a businesswoman, as a mother, as an individual. Um, and I respect him equally for the same, obviously not being a mother, but um, I respect his respect for women and what he's grown. And, and listen, he's had a lot of um, failures in it. Mm -hmm. And so someone that can get up and rise above and be more than their failures and realize and recognize the success from that is um, is a pretty remarkable person. So I have a lot of respect for David and um, the person that he is. And I have a lot of respect for the fact that he's fought to have me as part of the organization for this long. So um, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell us, tell us a little bit about that. Um, yeah, I've, 
I've heard kind of the 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 be, the the background folks, the people who are not in WoW, kind of mm-hmm. saying, okay, well, you know, she's been there from the beginning. That's great. We respect that. But it's time for Jungle Girl to, you know, move out of WoW and make more space for everybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, what are, what are your feelings, or what do you have to say to those people? Because I've seen you perform. I saw you perform at the Blasco last year, and I saw you jump off the third rope, and I was like. Can I just get a little, a little bit of that? Um, so I've seen it personally yeah. and uh, up close. But what do you have to say to those people who, those people who, those naysayers, like, okay, it's time for her to to, to leave the building? Well, listen, I'm a remarkable athlete, and I train like an athlete. Um, so as far as my in ring abilities, they're impeccable. And quite honestly, my in ring abilities are just as good, if not better, as some of the younger girls that are coming in to play. So. That's not a matter of question. Now, um, I think that what is so significant is that the value that I bring, not only to kind of merging, there is, um, if, if you look at some of the greatest talents in the world, why can a man stay in the business into his 40s and, and after his 40s and still be regarded as an incredible asset to that organization where a woman couldn't be. That's my first point. But secondly, if my in-ring skills weren't as top-notch, I mean, listen, I'm as I'm, I'm as good as they get, baby. And I'm like, fine, wine. I'll just keep getting better. And to the naysayers, I don't care. There's naysayers to the Tessa Blanchards. There's naysayers to everybody. So haters going to hate. And all that means is you talking about me, baby. That means you're watching. Wow. <laughs> exactly. All right. Please cut that, yeah. J-Lo. We're going to post it up on, <laughs> on social media. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I would love to know, like, the the background behind your persona of Jungle, Jungle Girl and how you created it so long ago and what it means to you to this day. Yeah, because on the WoW, when you look at the WoW profile, yeah. like, they do such a great job of blending the two because I know they mix, you know, real life with, you know, additions to. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But then you're looking at it like, well, so, is she really from the jungle? And then you see it's like, no, she's 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 American. But it's just like really, you, you get. Well, well, so yeah. the story behind it is so my mother is from Colombia, South America. Ah. And so I moved to the States when I was young. My father's from the States, but I have Colombian background. That's my my culture. That's my heritage. And um, so when. We had first started training. I mean, I was all over the top ropes and flying off. Mm -hmm. And so immediately, you know, when there was glow, there was a uh, jungle woman Mm -hmm. and um, who I was got to meet at this last event. And uh, that was that was a lot of fun. Um, So with that kind of just natural instinct to go oh, there, I am that natural instinct to go up to the top rope and to do kind of big flying moves and to have my background being from Colombia, South America, they kind of merged those two things and found a really good balance for jungle girl. I think that I'm a little wild. I think that I'm a little, um, you know, I go to the beat of my own drum. I don't particularly want to be tamed. So I think that it came together really nicely as far as um, bringing together the whole package that is Jungle Girl. Yeah. And and now Glow of Old and New. Have you watched mm-hmm. the show on Netflix? Yeah. Yes. What Love do you What do you th- you love it? I, love it. I know. I, I'm a bit, I'm a huge fan too. I know. I'm kind of sad. They're like it's the, the last season's I coming know. up. It's just like really. Um, so you've met some of the the girls from Glow of Past. Yes. What's your um, What was your experience like with them? I know Little Egypt's been around uh, quite oh, she's often. She's been around, and um, they're remarkable. I mean, they have such a passion and uh, for you know, what they had created. And they really had created something very cult-like and very um, different than anything that was on the market. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to see that they still, you know, are getting recognized and and have business and do the Comic-Cons. And I think it's awesome. I mean, my hat's off to them for keeping it alive and for people to still be interested. And all that does is just uh, make it better for us. So now, if you were to have, I, I, I heard you in the beginning. You have no, no, no uh, intention of retiring anytime soon. However, if you had like a bucket list of certain things that you want to accomplish before that day happens, do you have? Is there certain things you have in mind? 
um, yeah, I want the belt. Um, that's first and foremost. I would <laughs> like to, uh, I'd like to wrestle every single one of those ladies in the locker room. I have a lot of respect for each of the talent and very unique and diverse group of women. Um, I think that, yeah, how fun. I mean, I'd like to just go in and just clean house, baby. So essentially take the belt and then just clean up the locker room. Yes, I think not. I mean, at that point in time, just take the belt and just uh, have that. (laughs) As you're as you're looking (laughs) (laughs) as you're looking to like the future of like the women's wrestling across the board and in different promotions. What are you like? Who are you most looking at right now that um, you're excited to see? As far as the other, you know, I have a lot of. I, I enjoy wrestling as as a whole. I enjoy the entertainment. I enjoy the athleticism. Um, I enjoy the women in the WWE, Impact, and AEW. And um, I I think it is fantastic that there is as much out there to watch. I am so happy that now the conversation with the announcers at the table talking about the women that are out there. Um, being as athletic and dynamic as the men are being taken seriously and spoken about in a positive way and that they are um, headlining events. I mean, yeah. it's exciting. How can I, I mean, I can't narrow out. I mean, the fact that you have Becky Lynch being called the man, I mean, it. it's, I mean, you know, I'd say that's progress. Any piece of advice you have for somebody uh, who wants to get into the business? You got to love it. You absolutely have to love it. You have to love every part of it because with the good and the bad, and that's in any industry, I believe in passion. You have to be passionate about what you do. Otherwise, you're you're climbing up the wrong tree. It's just, it's not the right business for you. It takes a level of dedication, both of mind, body, and soul. Um, it takes... Um, really respecting one another, even when you don't particularly like the individual that you might be working with, there has to be a level of respect uh, for yourself, for the other people. Um, please, ladies, have some respect for yourselves. Those of you going in, listen, it, it's great to uh, to show a little bit of skin and it's great, but man, let your talent do the work. Let your talent do the work. There you have it. So, we are going to uh, get to know you a little bit more. We're going to hit the rapid hot tags real quick. Mm-hmm. Women's Wrestling Rapid Hot Tags. So here we go. Always early or always late? Always early. Last person you text? You. Not that, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> if you could listen to one album for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, man. Um, wow, that's hard. Uh, I don't even know. Do you have any workout Justin song that Bieber, you? I don't know. Do you say Justin Bieber? <laughs> no, not Justin Bieber. <laughs> I definitely not Justin Bieber. Um, I don't know. There's so many songs. I like songs that pump me up. I like okay. whatever it takes. Um, I like music that moves me, inspires. Okay. So like a workout mix album yeah, or something like that. Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you could have a, a superpower, what would it be? Oh, God. Uh, uh, what is it? Um, oh. To be invisible. Oh, to be invisible. Uh, are you a late owl or early riser? Ooh, both. Uh, <laughs> truly both. Up all night. Just up all I day. know, just 20, 24, <laughs> just 24 and I hours. Kind of, I kind of believe you, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, last meal, for the for last meal before you clock out, what would it be? Ooh, some good sushi. Sushi. Mm. There you have it. Sushi's good. Sushi is amazing. <laughs> I have to uh, the same again. My sushi talk. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, Thank really you. appreciate it. Um, definitely looking forward to like the next. I'm, I'm gonna like. I have to go to the next live show. The live yes, shows are absolutely amazing. If you're in LA area, yes. definitely check that out. And definitely check out Wow on Access Television. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and then also uh, your gym in uh, Richmond, Virginia. Uh, Richmond, Virginia. Tell them where what it is again. Endorphasm. Endorphasm so, in yes, a Richmond, it's exactly Virginia. Exactly what you don't want to say. That's it. Endorphasm, baby. <laughs> and where can people find you on social media? So Wow underscore Jungle Girl or at Endorphasm. Thank you so much for coming on. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Emily, for co-hosting. Yes, of course, my pleasure. Where can we, people find you? 
So you can find me on all social media at Emily May Heller. And you can find me on everything at TK Trinidad. Don't forget to follow us on social media, WPW Weekly. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, uh, follow us on all other social media platforms after Buzz TV. Other than that, thank you so much for Juggalo for coming on. And see you guys next week. Ciao.